Alright folks, welcome back to the Dawn's channel. I am the Dawn Father and I'm going to quickly go through my Round 5 2020 AFL um, tipping comp predictions then for you. So first up, it has been changed. I did have it wrote down Thursday, it was supposed to be West Coast Eagles Richmond, that has changed. Um, it is now Carlton versus St Kilda. That game was already going to happen. They just moved it forward to Thursday, the 2nd of July, at the Marvel Stadium. Um, going into this, Carlton are off the back of two um, good wins for them, really. Uh, so they'll. Carlton fans dare to dream. Dare to dream, Carlton fans. All I'll say to Carlton fans is remain grounded. Don't get too ahead of yourself. You have won. You've. you've let me look at the two results, right? We've got the two results here. Kelton's result. They beat Geelong 79-77 um, on round three back on the 18th. They held on by the skin of the teeth. Geelong almost uh, closed the gap on them on that one. And then they won by a point against Essendon. So although they're playing well and they're getting the wins, and a win's a win at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how you do it. It's about getting it. They've managed to get two wins. They've not been massively ruthless in those games so um, as I say be happy you've got your two wins but remain grounded St Kilda are an improved side from last year I actually feel St Kilda have been apart from the Suns outside of the Suns their transformation is incredible but St Kilda has been another one I've been mightily impressed with um, going into it then both teams have two wins out of four although Carlton has had uh, two wins in a row St Kilda one lost one lost um, I feel that St Kilda have more quality than Carlton um, coming forward. I feel that on the attack, they are the better team to watch. I think Carlton's probably as much of a muchness really between these two sides. Obviously, form going into it, two wins out of four for both teams. Both teams kind of similar positions, although St Kilda were a little bit better than Carlton in the ladder finish last year. I feel that there's not a huge pile between them, but I feel that St Kilda have that little bit of an edge coming forward. Their counter-attacking speed's frightening, and I really, really enjoy the way they play. So based on that, I'm predicting a St Kilda win. On to Friday then, Collingwood versus Essendon. 3rd of July this is now, MCG, Collingwood's form isn't great either, they've lost one, drew and won, and St Kilda lost last week, postponed and won their two, round one and two before that, um, this game's on a knife edge, I really don't, a lot of people say, what are you talking about, Collingwood for the win, Collingwood have so much quality throughout, the f if you look at the two teams together you would say, Collingwood are head and shoulders above Essendon on paper. But the Collingwood we are actually watching actually haven't been that convincing coming forward. They've been accused of uh, not scoring enough goals. And I actually have to say in some ways I I can see I can see the point the media is making with that there. Defensively they've usually been pretty good, but when you look at round four uh, for Collingwood, they conceded 66 against the Giants but only scored 64. So that was a bit of an arm wrestle, lost that game by two points, not much in it. I'm actually going to go, because 2020 has been an insane year, um, I'm going to give this one to Essendon. My brain t tells me, uh, on paper, Collingwood should win this one, but my, something in my gut saying Essendon are going to scrape it, and because... I've been trying to use my brain and that's not been working at all in the predictions this year. Um, I'm going for an Essendon win, so there you go. This actual, if you go through the games this weekend, it's absolutely mental. Uh, they really could go either way. There's no no real round, no real games in this round where you go clear favourite, clear favourite, keep clear favourite. Based on the form going in, it really is just who do you fancy for this game at this time. Um, go with your gut, maybe not your brain. I don't know. Anyway, first game on Saturdays, West Coast Eagles versus the Swans. This game wasn't scheduled for this weekend. But obviously, given the situation like I talked about in my video this morning, breaking news from um, AFL in terms, uh, in relation to, sorry, the COVID-19 situation in Victoria, um, 
these have changed fixtures. So West Coast Eagles are playing Swans at the Metricon. West Coast Eagles are off the back of three straight losses. Absolutely crazy. Cannot believe I'm saying that to tell you the truth. They were my team that I tipped to go all the way to the grand final before a ball was bounced. Um, and the Swans lost one, lost one. That's their form going into this one. Um, something told me before I put my prediction down. Uh, Swans, Swans, because I'd actually predicted them to win before the fixture change. Um, they were supposed to be playing, let me see now, keep this paperwork beside me. The Swans were supposed to be playing um, Melbourne at home at the SCG, but with the fixture change, it's obviously the West Coast Eagles, and I had the Swans down to win. Obviously, if you're going to go by form, you're going to say... Um, it would probably be Swans would be Bookies' favourites. I don't know. I've not actually checked the book, the Bookies um, who they have put down as favourites to win this one. But based on form, you'd probably say the two wins out of four. Swans are playing good. West Coast Eagles are playing poorly. But I'm going to fucking throw all of that form stuff to one side and go a West Coast Eagles victory here and this is the last game I believe before they go back to Western Australia so they'll be looking to get another win under their belt which has been a really um, disappointing Queensland hub for them uh, so West Coast Eagles win anyway on to the GM HBA Stadium now for Geelong versus the Suns. Geelong's forms all over the place again, like it was last year towards the end. They've won, lost, one, lost, two wins out of four, and Suns with three wins out of four, and their three wins coming in consecutive weeks, rounds two, three, and four. They look like they're absolutely brimming with confidence. That the draft picks have certainly just hit the ground running and. It's a completely different Suns team from last year. I'm thoroughly enjoying watching them. They play a lovely brand of footy. Um, very, very attacking. Very, very skillful. And they've got some beautiful young players in there that are just playing fearless football. And I'm thoroughly enjoying watching them. All that being said though, with Geelong being at home, Geelong aren't a bad side. They're not a bad side. What you can um, give them a bit of criticism for is consistency. Consistency in Geelong are really much the problem here. It's not quality. Uh, on their day, they can be anyone in the, lad in the ladder. Anyone in the competition could fall to Geelong. Um, they are a very, very good side, but they're their own worst enemy. They don't turn up from one week to the next. I don't know why it is, but if you were going by... Uh, their form, one lost, one lost, you would say they would lose this week, but I'm not going to go with their form, as I've said. I'm going to go with the fact that it's a home game, Geelong are a good side. This is the first time Suns are going to travel out of um, the Metricon now for a while. So this will be a test for the Suns. I think Geelong are going to have enough to beat them and get their first, second win. Uh, first First two game win in a row um, this year um, for Geelong that would be. So Geelong win anyway. So we're back to the Marvel now on Saturday again. Bulldogs versus North. Bulldogs are off the back of two wins. Two losses before that. North are off the back of two losses. Two wins before that. So both teams um, with two wins out of four and two losses. Not much between the two sides. But I do feel the Bulldogs... Going into this will be the more confident side. Um, I think they're actually starting to play some good footy now. And they're really battling and battling it for their 50-50s. Battling in their individual duels. Battling all over the field. Um, back to the Bulldogs way of playing. I think, I'm not going to go too much detail about it. But I feel um, the Bulldogs are going to be too strong on the day for North. And they're going to get the win. So the last game then on... Saturday is at the Gabba and I believe this game is probably the biggest game this weekend based on form of the two teams going in. It's the Lions versus Port Adelaide. The Lions are coming off the back of three straight wins. They lost round one all those months ago and uh, Port four straight wins. An incredible start to the campaign for Port. Um, initially, on my first set of predictions that I did, um, Yesterday, when I drew them up before the fixture change, I put Lions down for the win. 
But something in my gut has changed me here. It is at the Gabba, it is a home fixture, there probably will be a crowd at this. But something's telling me Port are just on fire. Um, I'm not too sure who the bookies have down as a favourite. I've got a funny feeling they've probably got the Lions down as the favourite because they're coming off the back of three straight wins. The Lions should have dismantled the Crows on Sunday, but their goal kicking was shocking. I think they um, had 23 behinds. I don't remember the last game that I've saw just as many behinds, and I'm talking key players missing some pretty basic shots, so it wasn't good enough for them in front of goal. I do think they'll be kicking straighter uh, on Saturday, but this is going to be a mighty game. I really think it'll be a close game. I don't think either team are going to win by a big margin, whoever wins, but I think Port Charlie Dixon's goal kicking has been phenomenal. I think he's leading the Coleman medal list right now. Currently, Charlie Cameron not far behind him, of course, playing for the Lions. Both teams really fine form, uh, but I'm going to go with Port last game before they come back to South Australia. I think they've got so many games now at the Adelaide Oval after that. So it's looking good for Port if they bring their South Australian hub home um, with five wins. Wow! Dare to dream Port Adelaide on your 150th uh, anniversary. Why not? It's a crazy year, let me tell you. Very, very crazy year indeed. And it's a tipping nightmare this year. Really is difficult to tip. Um, but Port Adelaide win. I'm just going to go with I'm going to go with the gut. I'm going to go with the gut for most of these. Port Adelaide win. One game that I can't go with the gut where I'm just going to go with the head. Based on, we're on a Sunday now, the 5th of July. Uh, first game up is at the Metricon. Crows versus Frio. I would say I'm actually going to go with the brain because Crows are in shambolic form. Um, Frio are in same form on paper. If you look at, they've both lost four their first four games. Um, really not a good start for either side. But I think Crows have been the poorer of the two. I think Frio have been... Um, and, and spells in some of the games, pretty decent to watch, but I think they're missing Nat Fife as well now. That could actually be a really big blow for them. Crows did so, show some glimmer of a fight back there at the weekend, uh, but it still wasn't anywhere near enough. And I think when you look at the scoreline, it actually is quite generous to the Crows relay and that is down to the fact that what I mentioned was the Lions kicking was poor. If the Lions kicking was straight, that scoreline could have been well into the 120s, 130s, no doubt about it. But they did show a little bit of fight, I think, in the third or fourth quarter in that game, which they could build on. They could build on, and that five missing for one or two weeks is a huge blow for Frio. All this being said, though, I think Frio possess more quality throughout the squad. I think they'll probably be a little bit more confident than the Crows going into this one. Um, I'm going to go with the Frio win. So, the other game that was changed is Melbourne versus Richmond. This one's at the MCG, of course, Richmond. Uh, we all know how well they play at the MCG, usually. Um, Melbourne going into this, lost, postponed in round three. They won and then lost round one. Richmond coming off the back of... Two defeats, a draw and a win. So they have only got one win under the belt after four rounds, which is crazy. And of course that draw against Collingwood, really, really low scoring game, 38 each. Crazy game, but actually a really good game to watch um, for other reasons because it was a battle. So they're only six points after four games. I think that'll be 10 after this game. I'm going with a Richmond win. I think the strong Dusty's back. in he, he, he Dusty, a bit rusty maybe uh, at the weekend. Maybe you could say that. I don't think Richmond are playing lovely stuff right now. No doubt that um, they'll need to uh, get a bit of a kick up the ass. Uh, and get themselves out of this little bit of a rut blip that they're in and I think they will. I think Melbourne, they're not a bad side but they're not a great side and I think it should be a straightforward enough victory for Richmond and if Richmond were wanting to make a statement they'll want to ha win this game by a big scoreline to give them a little bit of boost in confidence because they're not confident looking when they're in possession. They're not really hunting the same way when they're out of possession as they were most of last year, which is quite strange to say because they were one of the teams, particularly in the last nine or ten weeks of the competition last year, that you just, you had to tip them to win. They were just 
flying high, um, in and out of position. They they were just incredible to watch. That's that spark's been missing, but I think they'll find it again here against Melbourne, and I actually think they will get a convincing win. Um, will it be a massive margin? I don't know, but I think it'll be a convincing enough win. Richmond to win. Last game on Sunday then. This is another difficult one to call based on form of the two sides. Giants have got two, it's Giants versus the Hawthorne Hawks. Um, Giants have two wins out of four. Their last win, they won last week. Two losses um, in round two and three and they won in round one. Uh, Hawks are off the back of um, two wins in a row. Lost in round two and they won in round one. So three wins out of four for the Hawks. I actually changed this one because I put the Giants down for a win, but something in my gut is telling me they're going to find a little bit of fire in their belly after the weekend. Yes, they won, but they were not convinced in that last game, round four, uh, Hawthorne versus North. They just scraped through no more. North thought, fought back and fought back and fought back. And I actually, a part of me thought, because of the underdog thing everybody has in them, oh, I'd love to see a comeback. That would be fantastic. For a neutral, you love to see comebacks, big comebacks like that. But they just didn't manage to do it, North. They were very unlucky in that one. But Hawthorne should look at their defence and say... Do you know what? We were all over the place at times in that last quarter against North. I think they've got this week to iron out the creases there. Um, get rid of any little mistakes that they might be making at the back. Um, the Giants are a strong team. I thought Shane Mumford was very, very good. It was against Collingwood, wasn't it, at Giants? 66. I thought he actually at times had the better of Grundy. And Grundy is the best rock man um, in the competition in 2019. Uh, and arguably, he's going to be the best one in 2020. But I thought Mumford had a really good game against them. I must admit, he was a giant on the day. Um... All this being said, I'm going to go with a Hawks win. Something in my gut tells me they're going to do it. They're going to have three wins in a row. That'll be four wins out of five, if that's the case. Not a bad start for the Hawks. Top of the ladder's crazy right now. I'll just quickly run through my winners anyway then. I have changed a couple, as I've said, from my predictions that I initially wrote up. But because of the fixture changes, I've had to go through them again. And I've changed a couple as well after looking at it again. So we'll see. We'll see anyway. So... St Kilda, Essendon, West Coast Eagles, Geelong, Bulldogs, Port Adelaide, Frio, Richmond and the Hawks. That's my nine winners. Let me know who um, your teams are in the comments section below. R look, tipping's not easy right now. I actually did okay last week in round four. I got seven out of nine. Who was it that let me down? Let me just quickly go over them who let me down. It was Colin who let me down against the Giants. Um, and Richmond against St Kilda. St Kilda, absolutely brilliant in that game. 93-67. Smashed Richmond, really. But as I said, I think Richmond's going to be bouncing back this week against Melbourne. So... Thanks very much for watching everyone. Don't forget to get your tips in if you're playing the competition. Um, it's all good fun. First week, round four, I've managed to get myself back up the ladder and into seventh spot, which I'm quite happy with. I think it's possibly round one I was in the top ten, maybe. Can't off the top of memory. It's maybe in the top ten after round one. Not sure if that's true, but anyway, I'm in the top ten now, and that is where I want to stay. As I've said already, really, really, really difficult to... Uh, do your tips these hubs are throwing things all over the place 2020 has been a crazy year uh, generally speaking but it's the year of the underdog everyone it is the year of the underdog we've got the Suns we've got Port Adelaide we've got St Kilda up there Hawthorne big club but based on last year's form Possibly people might have considered them an underdog. Why not? Why not, Hawthorne? Why not? You win this weekend against the Giants. You're right up in there, aren't you, with four wins. So really, really good stuff. Hopefully the Bulldogs can get the win. That'll be three wins for them. We'll bring them to 12 points as well after five games. That's not too bad a return, considering that they were pretty poor in the first two rounds. Um, but look... I can't wait, regardless of the what happens in the tip, and I can't wait to watch the footy. I think there's a little bit of a dark cloud hanging over the AFL right now because of the whole Victoria COVID-19 spike. 
but I'm not going to let that uh, get the better of the positivity that I'm going to be giving us. There is solutions in place, the AFL already have them wrote up, so if that does happen, the footy should still commence um, and finish up in 2020, all being well. Thanks very much for watching everyone, and I'll see you all soon. Goodbye.